Hello, and welcome to DevOps Directive. In this video, I'll be providing a full walkthrough of building out a multi-stage continuous integration, continuous delivery pipeline within Google Cloud Build. This pipeline is nearly identical to the one that I use for the website that accompanies this channel, devopsdirective.com. As a starting point for getting up to speed and ready to follow along for this workshop, you can go to the GitHub repo linked in the description where I've provided a script that will enable you to build your own site and deploy it to GCP in about five minutes. Also, because this video uses some intermediate level Docker concepts, having a foundational understanding of Docker and building containers is useful in order to make this easier to grasp. Because this is a long video, I've also provided timestamps for each sequence in the process so that you can find uh, the portions that are most interesting to you and skip ahead to those. Or if you're just interested in the code and how we actually build out the pipeline and want to review it on your own time, go ahead and find that link to the GitHub repo. If you learned anything from this video, please hit the like button. Or if this is the type of content that you would like to continue to see, consider subscribing to the channel. I've got a bunch more content in the pipeline. Without further ado, let's get into it. So the first step is going to be to enable the Cloud Build API. We'll just click here takes a few seconds. Once we do that, we can go to the Cloud Build interface uh, within Google Cloud Console. If we go to settings, there's two settings that are important and I've already enabled them here, but they're off by default, so you'd need to enable them. This Compute Engine Instance Admin and the Surface Account User Roles will grant the build Surface Account the necessary permissions to, to actually perform the steps that we're going to lay out uh, within this pipeline. I also have the website that I want to uh, trigger these builds for stored within a cloud source repository uh, on Google Cloud. Uh, this is it. Uh, you could also store the website within a GitHub repository. I tried that initially and I actually had to mirror it to cloud source for a reason that I'll explain later related to how Hugo stores its themes as Git submodules. It doesn't actually store the theme code in the primary repository for the website. So I'll show you uh, sort of the steps that I needed to take to get around that. But mostly we want to work through the process of building up a, a cloud build pipeline uh, to, handle, to handle this build process. So I'm actually gonna try to draw out what cloud build is doing for us. Uh, all right. Essentially we use cloud build to execute a series of um, a series of containers. So Cloud Build will run a compute engine VM, and within that, we will be able to specify a series of containers that get run. In this case, we're going to have four. Step one is going to be to use Git to grab. Uh, to initialize and update the submodule files. We will then hand that off and use Hugo to actually generate the website. Uh, after that, we will pass it off to Docker to build and push the website uh, container image. And then finally, we will use uh, gcloud to SSH into the virtual machine, uh, stop the existing container and start the next. Another important thing to note here is that within this VM, there is this workspace directory. Uh, that gets space, if I could write, uh, that gets mounted in to each of these containers such that when we uh, create a file in one step, such as this step, those files get uh, are, are accessible by future steps down the road. So we get all the files, Hugo operates on those files, we containerize them, and then we execute a command within our virtual machine. Uh, so that's kind of the, the high, high level overview of what we're going to do. Uh, and so I'll jump back in and I've outlined those steps here uh, within our cloud build.yaml. As comments, we haven't actually done anything with them yet. And so this is, is kind of the, the process that we're gonna follow here. 
we also need to set up the trigger that we are going to use here. So to set up a trigger, we see this is an existing one that I'm going to delete. Uh, we see the cloud source repository. If we didn't have it hosted on Google Cloud Source, we would need to do connect repository. We could point it to a GitHub or a Bitbucket uh, repo. In this case, it shows up automatically. We're going to add a trigger. Cloud build demo. We'll call it cloud build demo trigger. Uh, oh, I think it has to be. Okay, we're going to push on any branch, and this is going to be master. Uh, looks good. We're going to specify the cloud build configuration as a YAML file. If you just use the Docker file, it would just build whatever Docker file was in the root of your repository uh, and push that, but that's not actually what we want because we need to first build the website then build the Docker image, then deploy it. Uh, eventually, we're going to use these substitution variables to allow us to uh, input some, uh, some values that will enable the cloud build.yaml to be generic across multiple different projects. And so that's, that's how I designed it, such that cloud build.yaml will actually work for my site or for your site. Uh, but here's where we're, we're going to put in the specifics uh, to, our, to our configuration. Uh, and so I'll do create trigger. And if I click Run Trigger, we will see a build happen here. These are all from, from my setup and testing. But this is the one that we just triggered here uh, a minute ago. And we see steps. There are no steps specified. The reason for that is because I have this empty cloud build file uh, where we haven't actually done anything. I have this backup, which is the pipeline I was using before. Um, and we're going to work towards building that out. OK, uh, there is one more useful thing to do, and that is to configure G Cloud, the, the Google Cloud command line utility, to actually be able to run these steps um, locally. And so we would want to install these Docker credentials. I've already done this, and install this cloud build local component. Um, I did run into one issue. I installed the Google Cloud SDK using Homebrew. Uh, so I did brew cask install Google Cloud SDK. And because of that, when I installed the cloud build local uh, setup, I actually ran into an issue where it was not getting um, it was not getting configured such that uh, my my bash uh, shell didn't find the cloud build local uh, executable. And the way that I fixed that is I did brewcast info on that uh, on Google Cloud SDK, and that provided me with these uh, locations or these paths of where uh, the Google Cloud uh, code was actually being installed. And so I added these to my uh, bash profile such that now I can do cloud build local, and it actually uh, it actually shows up there. So just a tip if you're using Homebrew and Google Cloud SDK, you may have to do something like that uh, to get it working on your system. OK. So we want to first get the theme uh, as a submodule. So if we look at how the theme is actually stored within our repository, if we go here to the themes, click on Anon-K, which is the theme that was suggested, the theme files themselves are not actually stored in this repo. Uh, they're stored in their own repo. And then we just have a pointer to that commit of which version of the code within that repo we're using. And so this, this was a little tricky for me at first because I had those theme files locally. And so when I was testing it, it looked fine. But then when I actually tried to run on cloud build, uh, we would get an error. Uh, and so I'll show you sort of what that looks like and how I debugged that. Uh, here in a second. But the, as I mentioned, the first is going to be to get a, a Git builder. So we're going to get a container image from Google that has uh, Git installed on it. Uh, this is the one that we're going to use. There's a whole bunch of different cloud builder uh, container options that Google provides. And then there's also community cloud builders that, that the Google community uh, and users have provided as open source examples 
that we can use as well. And so for this one, this is an officially provided one. We have this git image. The best way to figure out what it's actually doing is to just go here and look at the Docker file. Uh, it's starting from this base image. Uh, it's making sure that we have our git credentials uh, linked and, and set up with the credential helper uh, so that we can interact with git properly. And then this entry point would execute uh, the git executable. So it's as if when you run this command, it will run git and then whatever command line arguments you pass after that uh, will be the command line flags that get passed to git uh, itself. We're actually gonna override that entry point um, so that we can run two git commands back to back. Uh, and so I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Uh, but the way that we actually use a, a container like that is that we specify a uh, name and then that was the cloud builders git. I believe it's gonna be something like GCR IO slash cloud builders slash git. Uh, and so if we just did that, and then we did args, uh, I'm just copying from the setup that I already had. We could say git in it. Uh, and so that would run this container image. It would entry, the entry points get, so it would run git, and then it would run in it. And let's actually see what that does. And so the way that I'm going to do this is to, to use that local cloud build setup. Uh, and so it's going to be command like the following. So we're gonna run the cloud build local, and then we're gonna pass it this configuration file, the one that we're currently operating on. Uh, this dry run false says uh, actually run it. If you have dry run true, it's essentially just linting your configuration file to make sure your syntax is correct. Uh, this write workspace is really important. This is how we're gonna pass it. Uh, remember when I drew out how the these containers in the pipeline shared a, uh, a, a file system across the different containers and how the files persisted? That workspace container is what we pass in here so that locally we can see the artifacts and sort of debug what's happening along the way. Uh, push false. In this case, we are manually going to push the image within our, our uh, step number two here. And so we don't actually need this. And then this just says which directory the source code is in. And so we're gonna execute this from within our cloud build demo site, or this would be whichever directory you're storing the website code within. So I'm just gonna comment this out so that we have it here and then let's run it so it's grabbing that git uh, that git container uh, we see that it did pull all of the content from the uh, from the source code into this workspace container that I specified uh, but we got a error here done. So essentially we, we initialized the git container, but that's not what we needed to do. So if I go up one, I'll bid workspace. So this is the ls-a. Uh, we see cat git modules. So we can see that it has this submodule uh, but we don't actually have any of the files for it. Uh, so that's what we're gonna add next. And the way that I'm gonna do that is actually to uh, change the entry point for that entry point and make it bash. And so what this does is rather than when the container starts, rather than call git and whatever arguments I pass, uh, I'm gonna call bash and then whatever arguments I pass and I'm still going to actually end up calling the um, the git executable but here we're going to do something like git uh, submodule init uh, and and 
git submodule update. And so we're going to execute a bash command inside of that container where we take this dash C, this command flag, and pass it this git submodule init. And then the double and says if and when this first command succeeds, then run the second. If the first command fails, it will exit uh, as a failure. And so now if I rerun that same pipeline command that we ran before, we should see, hopefully, uh, that it will grab the files that we care about. So now if we go into this uh, cloud build workspace, Oh, I executed that from within the wrong place. So I'm gonna go uh, build demo. Uh, I'm gonna clear this out. Now we're gonna rerun that local uh, local build command. Our goal here is for it to have grabbed the uh, sub module and then pulled those files in. So if we actually look into the workspace, we look into the themes folder, now we have all those files available to us, which are going to be critical when we actually go to build the site. Without the theme files, the site will not uh, build properly and we would end up with, with a, a failed build. So that's our first step. Uh, we have gotten our theme from the submodule, and it is available to us within this workspace directory. Uh, the second piece of the puzzle is going to be to run our Hugo build step. Uh, so normally we would run uh, just Hugo, the executable. If we wanted to include the drafts, we could do a dash D, or if we wanted to serve locally, we would do that. Um, and so we need a cloud build container that's going to do that for us. Now I couldn't find uh, any publicly available examples that did this, but there was uh, within the uh, Cloud Builders community, let's see, Cloud Builders community, there was this uh, example uh, Docker file that is going to do what we want. And so I actually took this and built it and pushed it to Docker Hub, so it's a publicly available image. So if you didn't want to have to deal with that step, uh, you could just use this one within your pipeline directly. And so what this Docker file is actually doing, it's a two-stage Docker file. The first one is just downloading the uh, Hugo binaries um, based on this version, and it's using this BusyBox image uh, because it has wget and tar, the, the utilities available. Uh, it then, in the second uh, part, it just copies those executables into the root path. Um, and it's based on this uh, kind of default cloud builder image here. And we see that the entry point is set to Hugo. So if I don't pass it any arguments, it's as if uh, within that container, it's just running the command Hugo. And that's exactly what we want to build our site. Uh, so I am going to just pass in the name GC. Uh, in this case, because I pushed it to Docker Hub, Hub, we can just copy this directly, and that's a publicly available image. Uh, we could tag it with whatever version we wanted. Uh, let's just pin it to this version, because we know that is going to work. And we pin it by adding that colon after it. One colon, not two. Uh, so now, if we rerun our pipeline, uh, we would expect that we would get a public uh, folder here. So right now we have this public folder within our workspace. Let's actually delete that and delete this one too. So that public folder just existed because I had built my site, uh, my site locally before. And so if I comment this out, and rerun this, uh, we will not have a public folder within our cloud build workspace. And then when we 
add this back in, we should get that. So as you can see here, no public folder. We haven't actually built that website yet. If we add this in, it's going to add that next step in the pipeline, which will be great. And so there we built out our site, which is gonna include uh, essentially that homepage and that one test post. And then I do have one draft post here that once we get the full pipeline running, uh, I will turn that off and then we'll, we'll check to make sure the pipeline is, is doing what uh, we would expect and actually deploying this test post uh, to the site uh, when we turn that draft from true to false. Okay, so that gives us uh, step uh, number one here. We built our site using Hugo. Uh, the next step is actually to build the container image. And so we have this Docker file here that we're going to use to do that. It's a very simple Docker, Docker file that starts from a publicly available caddy server Docker file, copies our website files in from that public directory where we built them into this serve directory where caddy is expecting to find them. Uh, and then this has to do with uh, allowing the Docker container image to start and accept the Let's Encrypt uh, license agreement. That's not relevant here since we're not actually even using the HTTPS uh, config. And then this contains the, the configuration for the website itself. Uh, in this case, we're leaving that to be just serving to any domain on port 80. Uh, but we're going to use the gcr.io slash cloud builders slash docker. Uh, again, let's take a look at what that uh, container image is actually doing. Uh, I have it pulled up somewhere. Let's go here, cloud builders, docker. And the docker file. Uh, so we see that it is doing some things to install and configure Docker. And then the entry point again is this Docker executable. We're going to override that because we want to actually string, we want to combine two Docker commands into one step. We could have separate steps and just pass, uh, pass in this container image once, but because we're building and pushing uh, and it's using pretty much all the same uh, functionality, we might as well combine that into a, a single step. Uh, so again, we're going to uh, override the entry point into bash. Args is going to be almost identical, except uh, we're going to use our own. Oop. So here it's going to be docker build, and then we want to uh, tag it with our specific tag. Uh, okay, so this is going to uh, build our image specified by that, by that Docker file. It's going to tag it with this tag, uh, this commit uh, SHA or template variable is provided by cloud build uh, by default uh, when we actually deploy to our repository. When we run it manually locally, we actually need to specify these things. Uh, and this is a, a template variable that I'm going to specify in the trigger. Uh, I'm going to go back and actually update that trigger. And then this says run within my current directory. So use uh, the Docker file here. The second one just takes that image uh, and actually pushes it to the Google container registry for my project uh, using that same tag that we had before. Uh, so now in order to do this, we need to update this with a, uh, let's see.
there's going to be a substitutions and then we can do image name equals uh, in my image name here I am calling I'll build demo caddy And then my commit SHA equals manual one, two, three. Uh, and so I'm just specifying that as some tag that it can use uh, when building and tagging that Docker image. So let's see what happens. So it's building the site with Hugo. It's pulling that Docker container image that it's going to use, and it looks like it's actually finished. So now we should check, and we should be able to see, uh, for example, if I go here, and I go to the container registry, and I find that, uh, I see that I pushed manual one, two, three just now, uh, and so that's great. So that gives me my new container image built and pushed. And so then the final step in the process is going to be to SSH onto that machine and execute a command to stop the existing running server and start the new one. Uh, so it's going to use the, oh, the cloud builder gcloud. Um, container image and so the default here again we can go look at it on cloud builders G cloud essentially it gives us the G cloud command line interface that we can do with what whatever we want with um, we have these two options I'm not sure maybe slim will work let's test it and see docker file slim to run that and docker file primary gives us some additional uh, some additional options I don't think we're actually using any of those components so let's go ahead and use the gcloud dash slim option See if it works uh, again the default entry point is that gcloud command but because we want to run multiple gcloud commands we're gonna do the same thing that we did before and actually change that entry point to be bash args bash c and then this is gonna be gcloud ss uh, compute ssh uh, let me look up what it actually was So we're going to run a single gcloud ssh command. Oh, we actually don't need to override the entry point here at all because it's going to be a single ssh command, but we're going to pass in three arguments to it. Uh, so let me just comment this out so I can use it as a template. Um, so we're going to remove that. It's unnecessary. Uh, yesterday I thought it was necessary to do that, but looking at it now, it appears to not be. So now these arguments are gonna get passed directly to that, uh, that gcloud command. And so here we're gonna do, uh, do, 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 yeah, compute ssh, ssh string, This is the, the GCP project that it's getting executed in. Uh, this is the zone. Essentially, I'm just pointing the compute SSH command to the correct VM instance uh, so that we deploy it in the right place. Uh, and all these underscore all caps 
variables we're going to have to specify as substitutions and then later specify in our trigger. And so then the commands that I'm actually going to run uh, within that SSH context are these three commands. So I'm just going to copy them from here. And so it's three commands. On that virtual machine instance, we're going to run a docker container stop command uh, where we're going to first get all of the containers that are currently running uh, with this container list command and stop them. Then once that completes, we're going to uh, execute the docker container remove to sort of get them out of the way. And then finally, we're going to run a docker run command where we port forward our HTTP and HTTPS ports into our caddy container. We're mounting this. This is important because this is where it actually stores once you set up HTTPS, this is where it would store those certificates so that they could persist across uh, deploys when the container gets stopped and restarted. And then this is our container image, um, the actual image that we want to run. So get rid of that. And so now when we actually run our cloud build local command, we do need to specify all of the, um, the substitution variables. So I have that set up here. Uh, so here we have our image name from before. We have a home directory. We have this SSH string, which is what it actually runs uh, in that SSH command. So this is the username it uses and the name of the instance, the zone in which that instance lives, uh, and uh, commit SHA1234, we'll call it now. So I run false, and then we have the right workspace. So if I run this now, the hope is that it would actually go through the full pipeline uh, and deploy it, because this is actually the, the deploy step right here. Okay, we're pulling our gcloud slim container that we're going to run and then let's see here Taking a little while. Dun, dun, dun. It has to update the SSH metadata for the VM to enable this cloud build instance to actually connect to it. And we are done. Amazing. Uh, okay, so it looks like that actually worked properly. And so let's go to our site. Uh, which is here, and we see we have this single test post. Um, if we click read more, we can see it. Uh, but we want to update our site. Uh, so we have this cloud build post, and this is the cloud build test post. And we're going to remove that, and we're going to save it. And we need to do one more thing. Remember when we set up the uh, trigger, we actually didn't set up all those environment variables. Uh, so we're going to edit this and add all those things. We have the image name. Ah. The image name, which is cloud build demo caddy. We have the SSH string, which is Alice at uh, F1 micro. Uh, so US there is container optimized OS, is why I named it that. The zone uh, is US central 1A. 
And finally, the home directory on that container image, or with inside that container image that I want to mount to, uh, or sorry, within the VM instance itself, is that. We're going to save it. Uh, We're going to look at the current history. We see we tried that one half an hour ago. Here we go. Now uh, we have these two things. We're going to do git add cloud build .yaml, git add content posts, cloud build post, commit, and testing cloud build pipeline. Oh no, didn't like my git commit hm in cloud pipeline. Git push. Uh, so we just committed and pushed those changes, including the pipeline itself. And so ideally, if we set up our trigger properly, there we go, it triggered this build. And we can now watch these steps uh, as they go. So it looks like we already cloned uh, and got our submodules. We built our pages. We are building the container image. We're executing the SSH uh, onto the virtual machine to actually stop the running container and start the next one. And so if we're here and we refresh, it has the old version still. But once this finishes, we'll take a few seconds. Looks like it's done. We should be able to reload here and see our new post that we just uh, added to the, to the repo actually got bundled in and deployed. So great, that's a success. We managed to uh, build up our entire pipeline. We see that this particular trigger, uh, we had that first failed build and now we have uh, a successful build. So each change we make, we would just commit it to that repo and it would automatically get uh, integrated in and then deployed to our website. Uh, so hopefully that has given you an idea of sort of how the containerized pipeline within Google Cloud Build actually functions. Uh, I, I had never used it before this. I had used other CI CD systems, but sort of understanding that concept of it's operating within this VM with that workspace directory, and we need to execute a series of steps against our code. So in this case, uh, as a review, we had to get the theme as a submodule using this Git container. We then had to build our site using this custom build step with this Hugo container. We then needed to use the Docker uh, functionality to build and, and then push our Docker file. And then finally, we had to uh, stop the existing server and then start the next one by using the gcloud container to actually ex execute an SSH command on our VM. So this, this pipeline is pretty standard. You would probably have some additional sort of testing steps within there. So probably uh, within either between here or between here there would be a container image which would actually test the functionality within your code, both unit tests and integration tests, and then you would deploy. Uh, but hopefully this gave you an idea of how Cloud Build works and how you might be able to use it uh, in some of your projects to actually have a, an automated build pipeline triggered based on actions that you take with your Git repository. Uh, so with that, I'm Sid from DevOps Directive. See you in the next one.